Rick. How's it going? Clint Sheffer, the man, the myth, the legend. How you doing, buddy? Hey, doing great. You, you count me just as I climbed in the cab with my old man uh, here in the combine. Well, you know, it's uh, it's serendipitous that we caught you at that time. We were just getting ready to record the end of season harvest wrap up episode of Around the Farm, and we thought, hey, there's no better way to do that than to uh, to reach out to Clint Schaffer and, and see what's happening with you. Yeah, no, that sounds great. This is Around the Farm, the podcast about all things ag. In all our right, that's enough of that guy. Did you miss me? The original host of Around the Farm. I'm Clint Schaffer, and today I'm literally going to be taking you around my family's farm in western Illinois. Stay tuned as I show Rick a thing or two about hosting and farming. I would just take all the uh, all the listeners and viewers literally around the farm. So uh, I just uh, hopped in the combine with my old man. Uh, if you remember him from uh, on the Father's Day episode, Mister uh, Mister Doug Chaffer. So nice to meet you. Nice to talk to you. Yeah. So we're uh, we're out here. Dad's uh, picking corn. Uh, we just started. Uh, it would have been what this past uh, past Sunday on uh, about the ninth or tenth of uh, October. There, everything's been going pretty well. Um, I tell you what, our corn's been uh, yielding fantastic for uh, for the, the the year that we've had. We also had a fantastic soybean year as well. Uh, we ended up uh, doing some early soybean uh, planting and really kind of had it uh, stretch throughout the uh, the spring season uh, to the point. Dad and I actually had a bet of uh, whether our early planted soybeans planted on, uh, I want to say, 22nd of April uh, versus our other soybeans that were planted on uh, May 9th. And so I bet that our early planted soybeans were going to win, and I had to beat him by five bushels. Otherwise, uh, I had to buy him a steak dinner. If he lost, he owed me a steak dinner. Well, Dad, I'll let you tell him uh, who ended up winning that. Well, I, I ended up winning it, which of course I knew all along was going to happen. <laughs> and uh, but uh, they both yielded real well. But uh, uh, the main ninth beans did beat him by less than or over five bushels. So I did. Yeah, yeah. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bow down. Uh, you know, apparently uh, someone's been farming for like you know forty eight years. So anyway, so I'll be uh, buying dad a uh, buying dad a steak dinner. But overall, our soybeans, all of our Asgrow soybeans, actually ended up uh, what well, we ended up doing uh, the second best yield that we've ever had this year, and that was with absolutely no rain in the uh, during the month of August. Um, so uh, incredibly excited for uh, for those soybeans. You know, as we're sitting here opening this field up, uh, the the other piece to that is is really the utilization of of field view. We have our field view drive that is installed here in our uh, our 6140 uh, Case IH and then we have our iPad over here uh, that's uh, that's running and uh, doing all the yield collection. So dad one of the one of the things I guess I'd like to ask is what are some of the benefits that you've seen by switching over to a, a platform like FieldView where you can just access, you know, all of your yields and you can access that information from any time. Yeah, I can get it, it syncs up with my phone, it syncs up with my tablet. Uh, it's it's, uh, it, it's just a easy method of going in. I can pick any season for the last six, I think it is, we've got on there now. And uh, uh, same way anytime during the harvest or whatever, I can see what the hybrids are doing, what each individual hybrid is doing. Uh, it's and it's easy. Just put that put that uh, donut in, uh, and plug it in, and and it will sync up with my iPad, and, and I'm in business. And so go to the next field. All I have to do is punch in what field I'm in, and I'm ready to go. And at the end of the year, I can go through and get a total how many bushels I've gotten a bin, and it just makes my life a lot easier. Let's put it that way. You know, we started thinking about you know making seed decisions for next year. And, uh, and a lot of those, you're making those while you're in the combine. How, how has that changed, you know, from just being able to analyze your crop uh, pretty much in real time? How has that changed from how you used to do it? Well, we used to do it. We'd get done and then put them in the bin and maybe by next summer, if you remember how many bushels you had from what field, but most of the time we didn't even know. So, but then when we did get to writing down each field, 
you had to wait till you delivered them to the elevator to make sure that that many bushels was there and it was almost a year later before you had your information in all reality now i have it by the time i'm done thinking that night it's current and up to date so it's just 100 percent different and it's it, it is amazing that, that we can do it that way but uh, it is simple and at this age i need simple <laughs> You know, speaking of simple, you know, I'm sitting here next to him, and uh, and he's not even touching the steering wheel. That's uh, it's just amazing where technology has uh, has taken us. So, uh, well, we pretty much have auto steering on a on a majority of every field tractor anyway. Yep. So, um, what's what's been your been your thought about just some of the the changes in technology on uh, on that? It's it's so completely different than what it used to be when I started farming forty some years ago. But uh, now, I wouldn't even consider farming without the auto steer. It, it's, I'm so much more efficient, uh, less tired. It spoils you to the point that you don't want to go to the field without it. It's that simple. Same way with this yield technology. Uh, and the same way in the spring when I'm planting, uh, I can see where my bad spots are. I can glance down as I'm planting, see exactly what I've got left to plant in the field. It's it's just it's amazing, and with the auto steer, I can turn it on to auto steer, and then I can be working on my iPad and working with field view as I'm going along planning. It makes it really really uh, simple, and by the end of the day, I'm caught completely up with my footwork basically. And you know, one of the other uh, neat things that uh, that we always talk about uh, within field view is uh, remote view, and just being able to to. Re remote view in. I know from my aspect, uh, when I'm working in the office uh, a lot doing uh, doing my day job, uh, it, it's so much fun to be able to pop open the iPad, uh, see what field the dad's in, how it's performing, uh, and really just excited about, uh, about seeing a lot of that. But one of the stories that I'd end up sharing is is uh, this past spring out, uh, I was doing some of the uh, the planting in the spring, and it was really fun when I needed to, to troubleshoot something, uh, needed dad's expertise on uh, on how to how to set the planter. It made it real easy, you know, when we were talking about some of the, the downforce issues that we had, a couple sensors that ended up going out, and being able to troubleshoot some of that from uh, remote view allowed dad, uh, I would assume, maybe a little peace of mind uh, when very you weren't much, out there. Very much so, yes. And and that was something that he could do and we could just keep planning. We didn't really, it didn't slow us down, didn't deter us, it was wonderful, so. Yeah, so so I think we've just had a, had a lot of a lot of benefits in uh, in running uh, you know running not only field view but also just staying up to date on a, on a lot of the new technology. So, well, hey, Dad, with that, I appreciate your time as always. We got the corn in the in the back of the combine in the in the grain bin here, so or in the grain tank. Uh, we're gonna kick it over to the uh, the auger wagon. So, uh, stay tuned, and I'll uh, I'll be right back. So we are uh, out of the combine here, and uh, Dad's about ready to uh, to dump on the uh, on the auger wagon here. So I'm uh, we're gonna we're gonna record this. So from the uh, from the auger wagon there that uh, my uh, my uncle Bill is uh, is running. Uh, that's all uh, gonna go over to the uh, to the semi over here, uh, which uh, which is where we're gonna head next uh, and uh, talk to my absolute lovely mother. So we're gonna pick corn with the with the combine we're gonna transfer it over to the uh, auger wagon now I know some of you may give me a little bit of uh, you know hard time there auger wagon auger cart grain cart pick your poison right uh, whatever you call it on uh, on your operation but uh, here on Chaffer Farms we call it an auger wagon all right I'm back uh, climbed up in the semi and uh, gonna have a uh, conversation with my lovely mother Anita Chaffer hello there Mom, I just wanted to have a conversation uh, with you just about really the aspects of our farm being a true family farm. And I, and I think it's fun that uh, as, as I have told people, you know, over the, over the years in different conversations that uh, I'm like, not only does my father farm, but my mother farms as well, right? Absolutely. And, and I think uh, just tell the viewers uh, uh, in the list, what are some of the things that you do on Chaffer Farms? Well, I've always been part of it and feel very privileged that we got to farm this farm and uh, 
Yeah, I do a little bit of everything. Raise four kids, and <laughs> I do part of the field work and uh, run the semi. And she mows about like 50 yeah. acres, which is absolutely crazy, but but she mows a ton. Yeah. <laughs> and I do lots of mowing, yes, So and lots of tree trimming. So, you know, you talked about uh, field work, right? I mean, that's both spring and fall, right? Yes, absolutely. I love the field work. So <laughs> she talks about loving the field work. And I remember one time that uh, we installed the auto steering in the big tractor and uh, and you push back a little bit. Uh, how, how about you tell us uh, tell us about that whole auto steering uh, experience that, that yeah. first time? I've pushed back on several different items. Uh, one of it being the auto steer, just thought this is way beyond me. But thank heavens, my husband is totally a tech guy. He loves technology, and thank heavens, because it's kept me in the loop. And um, anyway, we, he put it in, and oh yeah, I, I mean, when you can go from one end of the field to the other and never touch the steering wheel, <laughs> it's wonderful. So uh, now I'm even complaining that I have to wake up and turn the corner. You know, I, I yeah. When we went from a small trailer on the semi, what was it? A uh, well, 20, 26, foot, 26 yep. foot to the 30. And I said, no, 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 no. I, you're getting beyond me now. I can't, I can't do this. And well, I have to because the 26 is gone and <laughs> all we have is the 30. And oh, okay. I, I did it. I got along fine. And then he went to the, to the big tractor and I said, well, now, You've got way past me again. I can't do this. And uh, yeah, it took a little learning curve on how to turn the corners. Takes a little bit longer. Uh, but, and needless to say, I have uh, got myself in trouble turning the corner. <laughs> I mean, the, the truth be known, we probably all have a, a couple times, so. <laughs> yeah, but you usually figure out how to get yourself out of that problem. Do, do you remember? <laughs> I do remember that. I, ha I had the finisher, and of course, it's a uh, pretty good width, and I come up to turn a corner and realized I was going to hit a light pole and tried to edge around, and nope, it's not going to work, and I tried backing up and going forward and jackknifing the thing until finally then I thought, well, I, I don't have any choice. I got to call my husband and have him get me out of trouble. And uh, so I called him and he said, well, that's strange. He said, have you tried to raise the wing? I just hung up. I'm like, <laughs> oh my, oh my. I, I mean, like I said, I think we've both been there uh, a time or two on uh, on some of that. But uh, no, I tell you what, uh, you know, I, I just think it's incredibly uh, interesting. You know, I mean, for for how much uh, for how much you do on on this farm and uh, and how much you've probably held all of us together and uh, and everything else. And uh, I'm just uh, I'm thankful to be uh, to be a part of this family and uh, and uh, for everything that you've done for us as well. And that goes from not only all the work on the farm that also goes to like you said raising all of us uh feeding all of us uh i always uh chuckle uh, anytime that you're helping out on chaffer farms whether she's in a in a semi or in a tractor somehow she finds time to cook absolutely delicious meals for all of us and uh and it's been uh we always love that aspect as well so uh but uh again i just wanted to say thank you so and thank you i feel very privileged that we We've got to live this life. So love my family. All right. Well, we love you as well. So. All right. All right. Well, from here, so we uh, we took you from the combine. And uh, so the corn goes in the combine, goes in the auger wagon, comes in here to the semi. The next stop that I'm going to stop at is going to be our grain bin system. And uh, we're just going to show everybody uh, where all this, uh, all this all grain right. ends up at. So. Okay. All right. Thanks again, Mom. Love you. All right. Thank you. I'm back and uh, in a new location here. So uh, this time I am in our grain bin setup, uh, where this is where we uh, ultimately take uh, all of that decalb corn that uh, that we're out there uh, picking right now. So uh, once it uh, goes from the combine to the auger wagon into the semi, mom will bring it to uh, to this location, just uh, about a mile and a half down the road. Uh, we dump everything into the uh, into the pit here. Once it goes into the pit, it goes over to the leg system. 
which you can see has all these uh, belts and or has a has a belt and a bunch of buckets that scoops up all of that grain and it takes it about a hundred feet straight up into the air, and that is right there to that leg, dumps it into a distributor up there, which actually throws it into one of those pipes that you can see coming down, and ultimately into one of these grain bins uh, behind me. So. Speaking of grain bins, I got one more person that I'd like to uh, talk to here, uh, and uh, he knows a thing or two about uh, about being in a grain bin here. So let me introduce you to uh, to my boy Devin. <laughs> All right, what uh, what do you uh, what what have you done up here uh, on the family farm? Well, I've been scooping grain bins. Scooping grain bins, how fun is that? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Do we? What, what, what's the temperature like when we typically scoop grain bins? Eighty. Oh, 80? That's like nice and cool. It's like usually like 100, man. It's uh, it's like we always pick like the hottest day of the year to scoop grain bins. So, hey, as we're sitting here talking about uh, about Grandpa's farm, what's your uh, what's your favorite tractor that Grandpa's got? The Steiger 550. How many tires does that thing have? 12. 12 tires. Wow. He always goes for just the, the biggest, most massive tractor that we got. It is a fun one to drive. So... All right, with that, you have uh, you have seen uh, Dad out in the combine. He uh, dumped some corn onto my Uncle Bill there in the auger wagon. Got to have a quick chat with my mom uh, driving the semi. And, uh, hey, that concludes this, uh, this tour. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, head on out. So have a good one. Thanks for joining me. All right, well, thanks very much, Clint. And thank you to all of our listeners who've tuned in throughout the season. 2020 has been a challenging year, but it has been an exciting one for Around the Farm. We've transitioned from just a podcast to the vidcast, and your viewership has made that possible. So thanks for spending time with us. We look forward to spending more time with you in 2021 and talking about all things ag. If you have any needs as you go through the off-season for support, never hesitate to reach out to the Climate Support Team. You can get them at 888-924-7475 or by emailing them at support at climate.com. If you've got any questions about how you can use FieldView to stay connected in these challenging times, visit us on the web at www.climate.com slash stay dash connected to learn more about how FieldView can help you to stay connected with those important around your operation. Thanks for spending time with us. And as always, we'll see you around the farm.